Hello everybody, welcome back to another interesting Monster Hobbies video. This time it's quite a bit different. We're going to do a little bit of a modified board game because uh, today I want to actually show you guys how this game plays out. This of course is Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow. Robert Kiyosaki of course is Rich Dad Poor Dad. You can always check out his website. I'll leave a link in the description down below so you can follow it. But anyway, this game has been around for a long time. In fact, this is an older edition of the game. There, of course, is a young Robert Kiyosaki right there. But anyway, um, rattle, rattle. Uh, yeah, one thing we sell at our store are board games, but this one I'm not selling. It's mine. But I wouldn't mind playing it with some people if you ever get interested in it. Anyway, uh, as we can tell now, if you uh, look at the stock market these days, especially like the S&P 500, you'll see that it's been like going up and then all of a sudden it came down, right? the last couple of months because of the virus and and well the price of oil and all kinds of other things it's all affecting the market so a lot of people get kind of worried with stock market stuff around this time and one thing that's cool about this game is it does have a stock market element in it so hang on I've got all the different cards that are in this game I'll set it up but what I'm gonna do is these are the small deals there we go. And as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of cards. These have been laminated. And uh, so in these small deals in the game, there's houses and little apartments and stuff. But there's this is where the stock market for the game is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Rich Dad Poor Dad. And I'm going to take out all the houses and stuff out of this. We're just going to play a little quick game because this is a three hour long game. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to show you how the stock market works to the best of my understanding. Now, this, of course, is just a basic rundown of stock markets and what happens, you know, with things going up and down, affecting markets and all that. So I'm going to show you how this works. So let's go down to my white table here. I'm going to set up the board game, do a little modification on this, and sort of give you a quick rundown of how it all works. So let's check this out. All right, so here we have the board game itself. And I know a little bit's cut off in my frame, <laughs> you know, just because. And I got a bit of glare here from the overhead uh, fluorescence. But what I want to focus on here is the idea of the game is you go around the rat race, you get all the little deals and whatnot, you land on the doodads and this sort of thing. And your whole object of the game is to get enough passive income that exceeds your expenses to get your expenses down. And then once that happens, when you equal or exceed your expenses, with your pot, uh, passive income, then you get out of the rat race and then you go around. This is the millionaire section up here. So what I want to just focus on, because we don't have three and a half hours of full on game. So I'm just going to zoom this in. How's that? To our center wheel here. And like I say, this is just to demonstrate stock market stuff for today. So we're going to take this down and uh, I'll set it up and we'll start playing. All right, so here I have all the gaming cards that refer to uh, investments that are not real estate. Let's put it that way. So what we have in here, these are our stocks. So we have three companies that are trading on our stock market in Rich Dad Poor Dad's uh, cash flow game here. So we have OK For You Drug Company. We have On To You Entertainment Company. And we have Mighty For You Electronics. That was a phone call. All right, so anyway, getting back to this. So those are our stocks. And then up here along this line, we have mutual funds. And the company there is Grow For Us. So it grows as it goes along. Then we have two certificates of deposit, which will give you interest of $20 a month. And it's windy in here, outside actually. And then we have preferred stock, too big power. And this one, it costs you 1200 to get, but it pays dividends at $10 a month. And then finally, this one is influenced by two different events. So all these cards that are green are part of the small deals. And then the blue card up here is the market. So what this is, is you get a rare gold coin in the small deal. But then as we play the game in the market, 
the collector wants to buy your gold coins and the price of gold will soar. So they're not really affected by the small deals. These are affected by the market. So this is the actual only piece that's being affected by the market. So with the stocks, you can buy them and sell them at any time. Now, the reason why we've got so many coming down here is because the stocks will rise and fall. So, okay for you, it starts, it uh, has a trading range of between 10 and $30, but it starts at $5.00. So this would be the stock going low. And then you've got two cards that are at 10, two cards at 20, two cards at 30, and one card at 40, which means it exceeds a lot of value, right? Now, these, this is all together as one thing. So I'll just close this one off here. Mighty for you and okay for you are the stocks that have the one for, or one for two split, which means that the company is losing money or it's in this case it's reorganizing so it says company reorganizes massive losses due to over expansion and recession stockholders lose one half of their ownership rights uh, so then it becomes uh, well everyone who owns mighty for you shares cuts shares owned to one half of the previous value so if you had 10 now it's worth five right uh, still no dividends. No one may buy or sell at this time. Okay, so that's the one reverse split one for two means your shares actually get cut in half. However, here is a two for one. Business is up dramatically and the company is doing so well their shares have just split. Everyone who owns Mighty For You shares doubles the number of shares they own. Uh, still no dividends. No one may buy or sell at this time. So now, if you had 20 shares, they would be 40. So that's what that means. And it happens the same way here on OK for you. The only the only difference is OK for you stock. It will dip down as low as one dollar because remember this has a trading range between five and forty. This one has a trading range between five and thirty. It will also dip down to a dollar in the market, but it will rise as high as forty dollars when the market is really good. This one will go up to 50. And that's the only difference between these two, other than the name. So I'll just close these down. Then I'll bring this down a little bit here in the next shot. All right, so now we have the mutual fund, Grow For Us. So this has a trading range of between 10 and $30. And it starts at the $10 mark, goes up to 20, 30, 30 again and then 40, because remember, this is all shuffled up. So here, your Grow For Us funds actually exceeds the maximum and gets up another $10 to 40. Okay, so then on your certificate of deposit, you got two of them. One price is at 4,000 and the other price is at 5,000, but it pays interest at $20 a month. Uh, the one year yield on this one is 6%, the other yield is 4.8, so this one is costs more, yields less. However, you're still going to make 20 bucks a month. Uh, and then, of course, you got your preferred stock here. This one, 10% yield. They're both 10% yields. Actually, they're the same card. <laughs> it has a trading range of 1,200 to 1,200, but it pays you a dividend, which is your passive income. And same with the interest. That is the passive income part. So the regular stocks will not pay passive income, neither will the mutual fund, but the mutual fund will grow. It's basically a different type of stock. And then you have the rare gold coin, which of course is your investment. It costs you 500, you pay 500, you have zero liability, but zero cash flow until it gets into the market, your collector wants it, or the price of gold soars. Uh, so what it says here, Okay, I'm going to switch this around. Okay, price of gold. So you bought, when, when this comes up, you buy one, right? 500 bucks, you can only buy one. See, one only, seller asks 500. So this says price of gold soars. Riding in the Middle East, oil prices threatened, price of gold skyrockets to $600 per ounce. 
everyone who owns one ounce uh, Cougarans, that's a coin, may sell at this price. So now, you made $100 off this coin if you have one. But when the collector comes around, collector looking for authentic 1500s Royal Spanish New World Havana Mint only pieces of eight gold coins. Cash offer of $5,000 for each gold coin to everyone. So as this one cycles through, you only get one chance to buy it per each time it cycles through. So in your three hour long game, if this rare gold coin comes up like four or five times, you could buy four or five of them. And then when this guy wants them, you're making a lot of money on the 5,000. When this guy wants, or when the price rises up, you're only making, you know, 100 per extra, extra per coin you own. So that's how all this investing in non-real estate stuff is working in the game. So let's try a game and see how it goes. Okay, so for our game, I've taken out the gold coin and the blue market ones because I don't want to focus on that for today. I just want to focus on the stock market part because currently our world stock market is in a great big dip due to the virus and other things. So I'm shuffling up all our stocks here because I want to show you guys how this works. And Robert Kiyosaki, he wants this as a learning experience type game. That's why he created it right in the first place. And if you want one of these games, like I don't have any in stock, but you can always find them on eBay and all that sort of stuff. They're out there. You can even go to richdad.com and he has a online version of the game that you can play. So there we go. We just get this all shuffled up. Now what I like to do is one of these cards, there's a red dot. And I put the red sticker on there because I wanted to see how many times we'd cycle through the deck. So I'm going to take this off for right now. And then I'll shuffle these two together. Yeah. Okay, I'll put the red dot on this one. This is now our new top card. So let me set up the board and we'll get going. Okay, so in the game, you can actually pick your profession from, I do believe it's about 15 different professions. And since I am the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, I decided to pick the business manager for this. So everybody gets a salary. They have interest, dividends, real estate, all this sort of stuff. You buy those throughout the game. You got your taxes. These are your living expenses. There's a car payment, credit card debt, student loans, all this kind of stuff. And then down here, you got your mortgage and all that sort of stuff. Your total income. So your passive income is zero. Your total income is 400. Sorry, 4,600. If you have any kids, each one is going to cost you 240 So your total expenses, because you don't have any kids, 2930 Take your income, minus it from there, and you get 1670 as what you're making. So then what you do is you transfer it over to this piece of paper here. All the details. And it gives you spaces and stuff. Oh, you, I also have 400 in savings, according to the game. So there you go. Okay, so to begin the game, I've just got the small deals. It's all I'm going to focus on today. So it says I have one thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. So one thousand six hundred seventy dollars, and then four hundred in my savings. So I'm going to use those in the game to invest in the stock market. So let's just move my money out of the way. Okay. So you only roll one roll. There goes the air compressor downstairs. Uh, so I get two, one, two. So it says opportunity. So all I have is a small deal. So here it is. What is the first small deal? Preferred stock, too big power. So that is 1,200 and it's gonna pay me 10 bucks a month. Okay. So I don't think I'm gonna buy that right away. Okay, so I'll go again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Opportunity. Gee, I wonder what it is. Okay, there we go. Okay for you is a reverse split. Whoops. One for two, but I don't have any of that stock right now, so that is not affecting me yet. Oh, and I forgot. I get my paychecks again. One thousand. Uh, did I draw? No. 
Okay, here we go. Mighty for you electronics. Today's price is five dollars. Okay, so let me just grab a calculator. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a graph for our stock. So mighty for you is going to be green. Okay, for you will be blue, and onto you will be black. So here it, we've got a dollar, five dollars, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, and fifty, just like it said it would be. So today it's at five dollars a stock. So let's say that I want to throw a thousand dollars into that stock right now. So we got a thousand dollars. Uh, divided by five so I would get 200 shares into that stock trading at five dollars so I will write that into my little column sitting right in here so there it is mighty for you 200 shares five dollars a share will equal a thousand dollars so let's see how our stock goes as we continue okay put that away all right, one, the market. How does the market change? Stock, on to you entertainment company. So today's price again is $5. So it says movie buyer fired after third mega flop. Shares sink, chairman bonus cancel. Only you may buy this. Okay, so $5, so let's do that again. Let's take another thousand bucks. Okay, and we'll buy another 200 stocks of Onto You Entertainment. Okay, I streamlined out the deck a bit. I took out all the mutual funds and certificates of deposit, and I also streamlined my cash. I'm just going to take all the thousand dollars here, and each time we land on a stock, I'll put a thousand bucks down. That'll make things easier. <laughs> okay, so one, two, three, six. Okay, so we got another opportunity come up. And our mechanic hammering in the basement down below. Okay, so here's now check that out. On to you entertainment. Today's price is now twenty dollars. Recent managers strengthened market shares of this leading company with good outlook. So only I can buy, but everybody else could sell. So now we've got this stock at twenty dollars. So let's check this out here. Okay, so here's our chart and the air compressor died. Haha. <laughs> and uh, anyway, as you can see, so our green dot there is mighty for you. So mighty for you hasn't done anything yet. But onto you, I bought for five bucks, and now it shot up to the $20 level. So now the $200 stock should be a lot higher. Let's go see what that is. Okay, so now we have 200 stock, right? And we now can multiply this by our $20. So now if we were to sell, I could get $4,000 for my 200 shares. You see, so now the market is up, but I'm not going to sell yet. I want to watch what happens with the market. All right, so let's roll up our next turn here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, an opportunity came up. I wonder if it's in the stock market. <laughs> anyway, okay, on to you entertainment. Now look, on to you is worth $10. So we just took a dip. So this is what's happening right now with like the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, the TSX, all that stuff. So we're taking a dip. Now let's see how this looks on our bar graph here. Okay, so now as you can see, on to you, started at five, shot up to 20, and now dropped down to 10, thus bringing on the air compressor. No, anyway. <laughs> so now here's the thing. You. I, you could have sold at 20 and you would have made 4,000. Now you're making 2,000, right? Because it dropped down to 10 bucks. Now you got two choices. One is to sell and try to get all your money or half of your money back. Actually, you'd still double your money because you bought it at five. So here your money shot up four times. Now it dropped down to double. Now you could sell or you could buy more. So you could buy more and it could drop or it could go back up again, even higher. So let's take a thousand bucks and buy another hundred shares. Okay, so there we go. Three hundred shares now. Uh, five and ten dollars for our difference there. So let's carry on. Okay, so rolling the dice. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
stock. Mighty for you electronics. Now, do I have anything in mighty for you? Yes, I do. Today's price is $30. So let's check this out. Okay, so here we have a change in the market. Now, it's shot up. My mighty for you is shot up to $30 a share. Now, remember, I had $200. So that means that now, if I wanted to sell, it'd be $6,000 I'd get back out of the deal. However, it would be nice to see if this thing went even higher. One, two, three, four, five. Another payday, but I'll just grab the grand. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So now we got another opportunity here. This is now Mighty for You Electronics, which we do have. So it says today's price is now $30. So let's see what happens there. On to you is the black arrow. So we saw on to you go from $5 a share up to 20, then drop down to 10. Mighty for you went up and then it stabilized across to 30 again. So that's how our stock market is looking for the game so far. So let's carry on here. Okay, so mighty for you, I bought another 33 shares. So I have 233 shares on the market. The original was at $5 and the $33 was um, bought for 33. Or 33 shares at $30 is what I'm trying to say. Okay, let's carry on in the game, see how our markets go. One, two, three, four, five, another opportunity. So how's our market going here? Okay, now it's on to you again. On to you is the value is now $40 per share. So this is where the market will go up. Okay, box office hit by children's division causes record sharp price. So let's see how this goes on our chart. There's on to you in the black and it shot way up into the $40 range. Now we have $300 or 300 shares. So look at that number. You take 300, multiply it by 40. $40 a share. You now have $12,000 sitting there in the stock market. Okay, so instead of selling this off, which I should do, I am going to take $1,000 right there, and I'm going to buy some shares. So take 1,000, divide it by 40, we get 25 extra shares. So let's see how this all goes. Okay, so now I have 325 shares in onto you, and you may be saying, okay, Trevor, why, why didn't you sell, right? You could have made all that money. So here's the thing. You've got to look at it this way. We've only played the game for, I don't know how many turns here. Uh, let's say each turn is a month in your life. So now it's really high and you're buying for a high price, but I'm consecutively putting $1,000 into the market. Now, the reason is I don't want to just be in the market for a couple of months. I want to be in there for 10 years, let's say, because I know this game is simple and we're just going around the circle and the stocks are only going to get up to a certain price. But we're going to, first off, for the purpose of this game, we're going to check this out. And then we're going to check it against, like, the S&P 500 and show you guys that over the long term is really where you want to be storing up your money. Because one day, you know, the top value we're getting for this share is 400 But as real-life markets go up and down, there's points where this share could be worth $400 instead of 40 So that's what I'm doing. So let's carry on in the game. Okay, here we go. The market, something will be happening there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Bang, another opportunity on our stock market in the game. Finally, we get to see okay for you happening. Long time maker of medicines, especially drugs for people over 70. Only you may buy. So we have 30 shares. Uh, okay for you is worth $30 a share. So again, with $1,000, we have how much? Okay, we're getting 33 shares for $1,000. So let's add that in. All right, so here's our stock market. And now, as you can see, we have, dun, 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 okay, for you, starting off in the blue dot right there. Now, I just bought into it. I got 33 shares. And let's see how our market goes. Okay, three, one, two, three. Another payday and the market. One, here's our opportunity. Let's see how our stock market is doing. Okay for you drugs. 
is now selling at $40 a share. Okay, so right there, you can see a gain in the market. It went up $10 a share from 30, which I bought at 33 shares. Now it's $40 a share. So if I was to cash out, you see, I would gain $320 by cashing out right now. However, $320 is not really worth cashing out. So we will continue with the market. Okay, four, one, two, three, four. Here we go. Is there any point in me rolling the dice? <laughs> I might as well just read the cards off. Okay, stock on to you has is now at $30 a share. Box office smash in adult division causes strong share price. So let's check that out again. Okay, actually you can see that it dropped because it shot up to 40 and now our market is down at 30. But still 30 is a decent price considering we bought this at $5 originally and a little more for 10. So let's actually invest into this now that it's gone down and we actually get a better deal, right? So as you can see, I added in 33 shares. Now we have 358 shares in onto you. So if that goes back up to 40, it will have a better value. However, right? if it drops, then we will be actually losing money on our shares. So let's see how this all affects everything. I was debating whether to roll or not, but you know, I might as well keep going with it. <laughs> so one, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. I wonder if it'll be the stock market. Okay, anyway, okay for you drugs. Now look what happened. Today's price is $10. So for whatever worries, look, inflation worries cause poor share of price in this long time maker of medicines. So it's gone down to $10 a share. So let's plot this and see what's happening. Okay, check this out. So it started at $30 a share. It shot up to 40 and then it dropped dramatically down to 10. This is almost like the S&P now, <laughs> S&P 500. So it dropped down to $10 a share. So what do we want to do? Do we want to panic? Uh, like we'd be panicking when we see the drop, but now it's stopped at $10 a share. So what do we want to do? Do we want to sell off everything? Well, let's take a look at that in our calculator. How many shares do we have and what happens? Okay, so with OK for you, we had 33 shares and we paid $30 a share. So now that it's valued at $10 a share, this is the number we would get. Oops, if we would, were to sell our shares, $330. Now I bought them at $1,000, as you recall, because that's what I'm doing. I'm spending on 1000 So instead of selling, let's see what happens if we buy another $1,000 worth of shares. So what would that be? Well, take $1,000. Divide it by 10, 10 bucks a share. I could buy 100 shares. So, hey, let's do that. So now that the market is low at 100 or at $10 a share, I bought another 100 on there with my $1,000. So now we have 133 shares. So what happens if that gets up to $50 a share? Well, bring out the old calculator again. We have 133 times, let's say, $50 a share. $6,650. So actually, I should be putting more than a thousand on it right now, but we'll keep that flow going. So let's go on to our next turn. You know what I'll do? I'm going to quit when we hit that red dot. Okay, three. One, two, three. So I get a paycheck again. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, market. Stock. Okay for you drugs. Now where are we? $20 a share. Low inflation leads to high share price for this long maker. Long time maker of medicine, so $20 a share. So let's see what happens. Okay, so here we go. We started at 30, shot up to 40, dropped down to 10. Now we're back up to 20. So I'm going to take another thousand bucks and I'm going to buy 50 shares with that. Okay, next turn. Five, one, two, three, four, five, the market. One, two, three, four, five, another opportunity, a stock market. Mighty for you electronics. Today's price is a dollar. So this thing dropped right to the floor. However, this is where it gets really, really good. Now check this out. Mighty for you electronics. Okay, check that out. We bought it at five. It shot up to 30. The market stabilized at 30 for a long time, actually, because remember there was also these stocks doing their thing. And we're, we're taking each card as being a month long, right? So this stayed for a good couple of months, and then recently it just dropped right off the map, all the way down to a dollar. I forgot to write a dollar, I should have done that. So it's at a dollar. Now, the sad part is, how much do we have invested in Mighty For You? 
233 shares. Now, whatever, however much money that was, <laughs> was $1,000 plus. So we put $2,000 worth into this thing for 233 shares when the market was going good. And now if we sold all our shares, it would only be $233. However, it's a dollar a share. So instead of having a freak out, jumping out the windows like a 1929 great stock market crash and all that, let's put a thousand bucks on there. Now you see, this is the same type of strategy someone like Warren Buffett would do. When the shares in something that is a good, good commodity, right? Is mighty, mighty for you is electronics. People still buy electronics, even though the market is down for whatever reason. So by putting a thousand bucks on there, I now have 1,233 shares. So if it goes back to $5, I'm doing good. If it goes to 30, I'm doing great. If it goes up to 50, I'm doing awesome, right? So there we go, 1,233 shares. So Warren Buffett, now when Coca-Cola was worth $2 and something a share, Warren Buffett put a billion dollars on there. That stock now is worth $20 billion, unless of course it's been corrected by the virus. But anyway, you can see this is the theory of this. This is how you get rich in these investments. Okay, carrying on. One, two, three, the market. One, two, three, an opportunity. Realists, let's see. On to you. How's that doing? $30. Okay, so now you can see quite a bit of a mood going on. Lots of swings in the stock market. So since we started this game, we have Mighty For You at $5. That's where we bought it. Shot up to 30, stabilized for a turn to 30, and then shot down to a dollar. That's where we're at right now. On to you, started at $5 a share, went up to 20, dropped down to 10, shot up to 40, came down to 30, and is stabilizing at 30. And then OK for you, started at 30 bucks a share, shot up to 40, dropped down to 10, and now is currently sitting at 20. So let's carry on, see where we're at. So four, one, two, three, four, another opportunity. I wonder if it's a stock market. Oh, look, mighty few electronics. Today's price is $40. Booming market leads to record share price of this home electronics seller. So you see what's happened here? Well, let's check it out on our graph. Okay, so there we go, look at that. Start at five, went up to 30, stabilized across at 30, dropped all the way down to a dollar a share, then rebounded massively up to $40 a share. So how many shares did I have? Well, we have the 1,233 shares, right? So now, one, two, three, three times 40. I think this is a good time to sell because, bang, $49,320. And you see, my friends, this is what's happening right now. Oops, not with that, <laughs> but with this. So this is, let's say you had mutual funds in the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 has grown up, if you look at it. It'll come across, it's now dropping because of the virus and a whole bunch of other things going on in the world right now. We are here in this free fall. If you can hang on, and if you can keep buying stock when we get low, the S&P 500 is not just going to disappear off the face of the earth. It will come back. So that's the joy of this. Even using something simple as a cash flow game, you can see how the stocks are all rebounding and moving at different levels and paces. So now, I'm going to sell that stock off for my $49,000. Okay, so I've made a notation that I sold it right here at 49320 I'm going to follow the market, play a few more rounds, probably call it quits pretty soon, but we'll plot this thing still and see what happens at the end. Okay, so carrying on, I got a one, so I move to the market, I got another one. Mighty few electronics. Oh, ooh, look at that. I think I might have blown it. Mighty for you. Yes, I did. All right. See, had I stuck in the market for just one more turn, this is a two-for-one split. It's also blurry. Business is up dramatically, and the company is doing so well that their shares have just split two-for-one. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, the problem is 
this split after I sold, right? If this card was in reverse order, this is what would have happened. So I was sitting at 1,233 shares. It did a split two for one. So I would have had 2,466. Multiply that by 40. If the cards were reversed, I would have 98,640, which is a difference of 49,320. Well, for, yeah, I would have doubled my money right there. So you see, that's the whole thing about sticking with the market. Even if the market does tend to come up and look ugly like this, you know, that's what you want to do. Okay, next turn. One, two, three, four, five. I get a payday. One, another opportunity. Mighty for you, electronics. It just plummeted $5 a share which is good because then I could buy more shares but I'm out of that game so we'll just plot it okay so next turn one two three four five six mighty for you electronics is now worth ten bucks okay next turn another payday and the market again mighty for you electronics what is with this company it's on fire here reverse split one for two okay so now this is where instead of whatever stock you would have at this point it would now be cut in half so you only have half your stock so let's see what carries on here okay next roll one two mighty for you wow these are all bumper to bumper so now it's gone up to twenty dollars no i did not put the deck in this way <laughs> just happening so 20 bucks a share okay we'll roll again one, two, three, four. Right there. Okay for you, drugs. Good. It's not mighty for you. See, today's price is a dollar. So again, this thing just fell. Okay, so this is how our market is now going. What it's looking like. The market history, I should say, over all these turns. So we had mighty for you at five dollars, shoot up to thirty, go stabilize at thirty, drop down to a dollar a share, then skyrocket up to forty dollars a share, only to drop back down to five dollars a share. Then it started to climb back up for $10 a share. Oh, sorry, when it went up to $40 a share, I sold it. Then it had a two-for-one split, so I would have actually doubled my stock. However, it dropped down to $10 or $5 a share, then it moved up to $10, and then it reversed out for a one-to-two split, and then went up to $20. Now, our OK for you, actually our on to you, started at 5 shot up to 20 dropped down to 10 Went up to 40, decreased to 30, stabilized, and it's sitting there still at stabilization. And our OK for you started at 30, shot up to 40, dropped down to 20, moved or to 10, moved up to 20, and then dropped down to a dollar a share. So let's go crazy here. Let's put $10,000 on it because I passed, you know, my paycheck a bunch of times and whatever else. I sold the 49,000. So let's put Sorry, let's put 100000 on it. Let's go right on the edge here. Okay, so now we have $100,183 on it at a dollar a share. I didn't write that in there, but let's see what happens with the market next. Okay. One, two, opportunity. Let's hope it's good. Stock. Okay for you, drug. Booming market raises share price of this long-time maker of medicines. Today's price, $50 a share. Now, let's check this out. There's our shares. Multiply that by 50. Boom. 5,009,150 dollars. Let's sell. <laughs> Why mess around? Let's sell. Okay, so here we are. Okay, for you drugs started at 30, went up to 40, dropped down to 10. And I held in all throughout this market going bad. Went up to 20 and then dropped to $1. And at $1, I bought 100,000 shares of this thing. And then, wing right next turn, shot up to $50 a share. And I sold it for $5,009,150. See, that's what Warren Buffett and all those rich guys do. They don't let the first fall hurt them. They just keep investing into it, 
and then afterwards when it goes back up again that's when they sell that's when you make your capital gains in the market okay so let's continue one we got the market one two three four another baby Ooh. one two paycheck one two three four five six I got downsized so it says pay amount of total expenses to the bank and I lose two turns well we're just showing the market in this video so anyway one so I get an opportunity after my two turns and repayment on to you it is now worth ten dollars a share so let's continue to plot this okay I'm not going to show the graph I'm going to carry on one two three four five six so we got another opportunity okay for you drugs has just split two for one so it would have doubled my shares but hey I don't want to be greedy at ten million dollars so I'll just stick to my five and be happy with that keep investing so let's carry on carrying on one two opportunity stock okay for you drugs fell all the way down to five dollars a share Whew. okay let's interest rates cripple share price of this long time maker medicines see how this goes okay carrying on get a paycheck one two three okay for you drugs starting to go back up ten dollars a share okay that's plotted let's roll again one two three a third baby one two three four five let's okay. do this again on to you has shot up to twenty dollars a share and I see that we've got a red dot on our thing so that means that this will be the last turn so on to you is at twenty dollars let's just price that out okay so we have on to you I have 358 shares these are sold remember 358 shares and okay I'm gonna lose a little money at twenty dollars but it kind of stabilized so 358 times 20 Let's see how much I'll make. So there's my my value if I sold it all. $7,160. So let's see how all this translates. So what did we learn from playing that cash flow game with the stock market? Well, as you can see, if I hold our chart up again, you can see just how, there we go, how volatile and how much this thing moves. It's going up and down all the time. Now, I know this is just a game and, you know, hey, I, I didn't really win her... Uh, five million sixty five thousand six hundred and thirty dollars is has, oh man that would be great imagine monster hobbies with a five million dollar background eh i mean all these empty shelves and things because we're we're in a bit of a recession up here in alberta the land of oil that nobody wants and no one will pump and no one will put through a pipeline <laughs> but anyway here we are and you know monster hobby sales are eh, right now they will improve later that's the situation we're in now but I mean, think of that, $5 million sitting in here in Monster Hobbies. Wow. I can't imagine how much I get, especially we've been in a recession for years. And just, I can't even fathom, like, what would I buy for stock? How would I have any room left on the shelves? You know, of course, I would invest some of that into more st uh, mutual funds, <laughs> stock markets, whatever. So, but anyway, the, the whole point is we're in that slump right now. Markets are going down because of the virus. And the whole thing with the virus is that all our stuff is made, everything we own, right? You know, here, my phone, right? It's made in a particular country. This particular country has the most people on it in the entire planet. Now, that country started with the virus. The problem is, what's happening right now is you've got like Apple, Microsoft, and these big companies that are creating stuff actually pretty much the entire planet right now all their stuff is made in that great big country right that has the virus so everything in that country is being held there the second part of this is cruise ships airlines and everything else can bring people that have the virus into your country or from your country back into a virus country let's say right you know international travel so they're shutting that down. They're also shutting down sports because you don't want to have somebody with the virus go up to a player and get the, the player sick. We will get the whole team sick. And from what I've heard on the radio today, it takes five days 
for you to discover the virus, that you have it, right? So this is a big problem right now. So all the markets are going to the bottom because we can't go to the big country and say, I want my order now, send it over, because it's all could have the virus. So you can't get your order until people can deal with the virus. You know what I mean? So stocks in okay for you drugs would be going good right now because that's where people want to invest the money is into curing this thing. Now I'm no financial planner. I'm not a crystal ball guy. I can't say, oh, invest in this and this and this and then it'll all go up and down, you know, whatever. It's a volatile market, right? But all I'm saying is once the virus is dealt with and trade from the big country comes back into everything, expect something like from when we had the dollar and it went weep right back up. The problem is nobody knows how long this will be. How long will we be sitting in this, you know, down with all our stocks being going down and down and down like the S&P 500. See like that right there, right? We don't know how long that's going to be. Uh, I've heard that it could be all the way into July. It could be cured by next week like advances in medical science we don't know right uh, a lot of people are researching it every day we're learning more and more about the virus i can't say what virus because then you get demonetized because face uh, youtube doesn't want false information spread so i'm just saying okay here's what will happen you know the virus will eventually get cured we will eventually trade back with our big company our country right and consumerism will start coming back and the stock market will go from the you know uh free fall to to stabilize to come back up again it's happened back in the past the great depression happened in the 80s happened in the 90s happened well pretty much every decade has something where it happens and the last one i do believe was 2008 they're saying when uh, the world markets crashed the americans walked out on their housing all that kind of stuff right why? <laughs> Somebody downstairs walked out as soon as I said the housing market and they walked out anyway. <laughs> so, but anyway, so once those problems back then, like in 2008, once those got solved and corrected and adjusted for and tweaked and the banks didn't just give anybody and their dog alone when they went back to, okay, do you have a job? Do you have this? How long have you worked here? Those questions that safeguarded it originally. You know, they got thrown out the window in 2008, and then they got reintroduced about 2010 or 2012. And now that the housing market in the States has gone back to what it was supposed to be, right? Nobody's walking out on their loans. So basically is what I'm saying. So you see, all this stuff gets fixed in time. You know, the Great Depression, it didn't just last, and everybody's now living in the Dark Ages for centuries, right? It came back in the, well, World War II brought it back, really, but it was coming back at the end of the 30s. <clears throat> So, you know, this kind of stuff, right? So again, we're in one of those things and they're targeting like July possibly, but again, I'm no crystal ball reader, right? And that's what they're targeting. So let's say it does start coming back in July. So what are you doing right now? Are you buying as things are going down or are you selling off in the panic? Level headed minds will prevail at the end. You know, I'm a hobby shop owner. I can only put in little teeny bit into as it's going down. I wish I could be Warren Buffett and just be like, here's my wallet. There we go. Oh, five years later. There, now my wallet's like this, you know? Uh, not there yet. But I, mine might go from here to there to there, eventually to there. And the thing is, I'm not trying to become a billionaire. All I'm trying to do is just make sure I have food on the table for the next time around this happens. And you'll also hear a lot of people are investing in gold. Gold is going up right now. So you see some markets go down, other markets come up. And it's exactly as Robert Kiyosaki put into the cash flow game. And as we charted out here, it's all a matter of the roll of the dice, basically, and how this stuff works. Like I said there, you know, I'm not saying go invest in this, but here we have a virus, right? We're in virus time trying to cure things who would you put money into right now would you put it into a travel you know would you put it into travel well probably not right or you might because travel is down so you get good low stock but if you had bought stock when okay for you drug company was down 
and travel was up. Now they've done a reverse, right? So the so you would cash out with the drug thing, but stay with the invest in the travel. So sell out, you know, just saying, <laughs> sell your shares in the drug thing as it's going up. Invest it in travel because travel is down. Now you're doing that doubling your shares down here and all that stuff, right? So when travel comes back up and drugs go down because they don't need it anymore, you know, as much anymore because drugs still make money. Now your airline thing is going up, right? Travel is back. So now you sell your shares in the travel and invest it back in the, you know, and trade and trade and keep going. Go through as you get older, right? You've got time. Time is on your side. So let's say you're young 20s. So start investing something now and keep putting in like I did in the game. I put, now you may not have this every month, but I put a thousand bucks in in the game. Uh, you might only have $100 put in the game each time. The game is the stock market, the real stock market, not the cash flow. Cash flow teaches you how that works, right? The system. But you want the real thing. So go out there, look in the banks, look at the stock market, look at all th sorts of things. You know, mutual funds, that's through the bank. So it's a little more secure and not so you know, weird to get into or whatever, right? You don't need to be quite an expert. Put some money in mutual funds and the mutual funds will go up and down. Take them out 20, 30 years later when you hit retirement, 65. Why not, right? Cash them in, you make more money. So just before I go, one thing about the S&P 500. Now this is kind of cool. Now, now this didn't happen in my family, but <laughs> it's funny, there's a big chart at the bank and it says, this is the funny part because my mom was born in the same year that it says. So it says, in 1934, if you were to put, if somebody back in 1934 put $1,000 in the S&P 500, way back then, right? So that's when the chart starts. Put $1,000 in the S&P 5,000, 500, pardon me. You know how much it's worth now? If you had stuck 1000 bucks in there in 1934 and you never invested anything else in there, just let $1,000 sit there, right? And now you're going to cash it out. And you're like, let's see, hang on. So 2020 minus 1934. So you're 86 years old, right? Okay, 86. And you decided, all right, you live this long, you're 86. Let's take the money out of the S&P 5,000. Let's, let's take the $1,000 out that my parents put in for me or my grandparents or something, right? That's been sitting there forever. So you take this thing out. It's now worth $9 million. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So if you rode that thing out, in 1934, you rode it out, you rode it out into the 50s. There was a recession in 58, I think it was. Yeah, I read it in a car magazine. There was a recession in 1958. They were talking about the GM cars. General Motors and all that stuff. They had a, there was a big recession that happened in 1958. Then they were talking about how GM rebounded in 16, 62, whatever, 64, Mustang for Ford and all this stuff. And it, it rebounded. So you didn't pull out 1958 with your thousand bucks. You just locked it in, right? Forever, right? Didn't you, you forgot it was there. So now you're 86. You take it out $9 million. Rode through all these up and downs in the stock market, S&P going all crazy, whatever. Nine million bucks. Well, of course, it would be a little bit less now because it, it just fell down the last two weeks. But, you know, rewind the clock two weeks ago when it was at its pinnacle, top. Take it out then. Nine million dollars, <laughs> right? I wish that happened in our family. Because, <laughs> you know, mom would chop it up into pieces and give it, you know, a couple million to each of us kids. No, it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Here I am still in the shelves, the empty shelves of Monster Hobby. So, <laughs> whatever. But, again, that's the key point, right? So you put money in there, put a hundred bucks in each month, 1200 in a year, over year, over year, over year, over year, compound interest, market moving up and down, da, 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 da. take it out when you're 86, see what happens. Start at 20, take it out when you're 86. Start at 30, take it out when you're 86. Actually, take it out when you're 65 for your retirement. You know, it's all kinds of options. And don't put it in one basket, put it in a couple of stocks, see what happens. Mutual funds. All that kind of thing. Anyway, this is Trevor Zaleski from Monster Hobbies, and I hope your cash flow adventure will be really good.